Welcome to Grover Load. I'm Anthony, and I finally got done and watched AMD's AI presentation, their server presentation, and it is interesting. Uh, you know, I've looked at NVIDIA's, and NVIDIA's at Computex was pretty boring there, but they are in front. They have everything out for the AI, AI stuff. The H100 has been selling through a lot. We're expecting a big quarter from them, according to NVIDIA itself. So we'll see how that all rolls out. Maybe I'll do a video once once the quarter's over to see how they are competing with, well, really nobody right now. Um, a lot of AI stuff is ran on CPUs for the most part right now, and they that's why the H100 is selling so well, because it's moving to GPUs. So, and for that compute side, workloads. And so everyone's starting to move everything over to there, and NVIDIA is going to make a lot of it until AMD can get out there. So AMD first to close, you know, all everything with Zen 4 and their server CPUs, you know, updating to the new uh, Genoa um, I, CPUs, right? I believe I'm right there. But then you have the Zen 4 cores. Those are going to have it. You have the uh, 3D cache. And then you also have the Zen 4C, depending upon what you want. AMD brought up a lot of different people. So, and to fit their workload however they want, right? Let's say you need more cores and you don't care how fast they go, you have Zen 4C. Let's say you want some of the faster cores and a lot of cash, um, you, ha you have that one. So AMD can mix and match this. You can, you know, kind of uh, build your data center instead of, you know, build a bear. Uh, build your data center however you'd like to be able to do it and this is one these Genoa X CPUs and everything else Genoa you know has a huge amount of ability right you have the um, what is it the 96 uh, 54 the 97 54 and the 96 84 X right depending upon what you want to do you can and they have a whole range but AMD um, has just a different optimized workload for each of them. You can have a core density, you can have cache per core, you can just have a normal side thing. You know, AMD has that um, a diagram where they have core IPC, core density, power efficiency, frequency, and cache per core for their server side stuff. And they, that you know, the normal one is basically the perfect um, shape while the other ones are all, you know, pulled in each direction so if you, you for the Zen 4 C's are a lot more efficient so I just wanted to get there you have um, it's you know these are just some of the crazy things that AMD is doing to bring you out to the server market and it looks like they're continuing on that path right mixed between four nan or five nanometer and six nanometer depending upon what it is and you you have that ability so that's good to see that AMD is coming out with this on a lot of different stuff now the interesting side stuff that I want to touch on for AI is AMD's finally getting into AI. They have the uh, MI300s, MI300A, and MI300X. Now, these are really kind of only sampling at this point, which is a disappointment. I'd love to see these actually be out in systems. Um, it just shows you AMD is behind the eight ball in this stuff. So. Um, hopefully that they will come out with it soon and, you know, and, and sample it at a large enough pace so if people want to get their hands on it to see how it performs they can get in this um, stuff and you, you have rock m right they're um they're kind of competitor to well it's an open source but it's a competitor to um all of nvidia software um on the server side stuff their cuda and etc and hopefully that starts taking off a little bit more because I, me, I personally like to see a more open standard and that can run on everything. That allows you to, let's say, the hardware for some reason gets slower. You're not locked in, right? Pricing can be a thing, everything else. So um, stuff like this I'd like to see more of from AMD, but we'll see how it kind of goes here. And, you know, the MI300 series, right, includes that um, 300X which is CDNA3, so this architecture is bumped up, and it has 192 um, gigabytes of HBM3 memory. The bandwidth on it is, what, um, 5.2 gigabits per, 5.2, 5.7, uh, sorry, I lost in my notes here, but the, it has a lot of performance here. You know, the, the really cool thing is MI300A.
in my opinion. This is where you integrate the CPU, GPU on one massive chip. Now I've heard that this chip uses a lot of power, but overall efficiency is supposed to be amazing for the power envelope that it's using. And the MI300X is your GPU only. And so you have the AX, uh, what was the third one? There's three here. Oh, well, I guess there is the A and X. I thought there was another one, but they, they announced this at the end. They could announce it in the beginning when we could all have paid attention a little bit more. <laughs> oh, it, yeah, it gets, it gets long in the teeth pretty quick on some of these. But um, MI300, 5.2 terabytes per second of memory is what they said. And uh, so I was close. But the but this is just all kind of coming together so that they have this AI performance, this architecture. You know, they have the new math por uh, formats. They, they are allowing um, a lot more information and stuff to be able to go through these chips. And AMD kind of, kind of put these out there, right? You have, uh, and these are all chipless based, which is one of the biggest things that AMD has an advantage right now is the chiplets is be able to make up these CPU GPU type things so that you can do whatever you want right some of these are coming with what 24 Zen cores and then uh, 24,000 uh, CD, CDNA cores or well it's 304 CDNA cores but totals up to 24,000 cores according to this article here that I'm um, that I had referenced um, that, that's pretty incredible, right? To be able to do all that, put that all into one package. Now, can AMD deliver on that in the AI sector? That's one question I do have is, are they gonna be able to turn this over into a product that will be able to compete with NVIDIA, right? This is all good. You have, you know, 3D ch you know, chip packets that you can do. You got these chiplets. But can you put it into a product that's able to compete with NVIDIA in the AI sector and really, really take off, right? Um, you, you look at that sort of thing, and that's kind of what you want to see. I mean, in all markets, we want to see competition, but I like to see some openness, too. And if AMD can bring this openness, I think that that would be a huge benefit to consumers and to especially the business side consumer that are buying these and then people that are going and using it. And according to them that they're delivering a 5x AI performance uh, teraflop per watt over the MI250 <clears throat> excuse me X that they already have out so that is actually a huge boost and um, we'll see right they're sampling in uh, MI 300 X is sampling in Q3 I think MI 300 a is sampling now and then production is Q4 so these are going to take some time out, right? We got basically a half a year NVIDIA has ahead of it. Is AMD going to be able to do that and keep that forward? Now, we've even heard a little bit more about RockM. Now, that's their software that they're using to compete with CUDA. What is really cool is that this is going to be, uh, according to some leaks and everything else, it seems like, or you know, leaks as in they were putting some stuff in and referencing RDNA 3 GPUs. If the consumer GPUs start getting this, I think that's going to really help them, right? CUDA is even on the desktop GPUs that they have and that they can run it. So now if AMD puts it on their consumer cards, you have somebody like me that software develops that wants to, you know, test it out and everything else. You can do that in a consumer GPU rather than having, if you want to do some of this research, jumping over to NVIDIA. And I think that that is one downside that NVIDIA or that AMD has to get over is put it this and everything, allow everyone to kind of go through and utilize it so that there can be a better um, ecosystem and more people trying to contribute to this because they can use it on the GPU that they already have. So let me know what your thoughts are with a AMD's uh AI day, in, you know, server day. I think that, you know, in the server, they're starting to, to really turn over the leaf on the CPU server side. I think they're going to get that and start moving that market share up. Intel is um, hopefully going to get into that sector again and really start pushing AMD. I'd like to see that. But I think, I think that they're going to continue to grow their market share on the server side. On the AI side, I really want to see more. You know, this does seem like it's six months late. Um, 
we'll see how they can capitalize it. Now, I don't think AI is over in six months, but what I, what I'm saying is that let's say you were, you know, releasing now against or releasing even early Q3, you'd have that ability to kind of, you know, compete with Nvidia a little bit more, but giving Nvidia basically what uh, half a year, if not more. I think that's going to really, uh, NVIDIA is going to have a lot of juice to just keep on rolling that in and momentum that AMD is going to have to fight an uphill battle for. So with that, I really do appreciate all of you um, supporting this channel and helping it grow. Do all the normal stuff, subscribe, hit the uh, bell icon, uh, share the video. I really do appreciate it. And tell me your thoughts on what do you think about the AMD server market and um, also their AI market, where do you think they're going? I think with everything that's going on, they had a lot of people on stage, a lot of people are using these big hyperscalers and stuff, are using their products. Um, is that gonna come down to other companies? Is that gonna get into even consumers You know, with everything? And I think if you, AMD has even their products, even if it's just all in one CPU, let's say you have a couple Xilinx, um, Xilinx uh, IP on a CPU, I, I believe that's coming out in there. Um, that's in their, what, 7040 series laptops. But let's put that in desktop along with some RDNA stuff that use ROCKM and the CPU stuff. You start building this, even if it's small scale in these products, I think that gives opportunity for all these, uh, for people to actually want to use it and be able to have it in their products so that they have access to it when they run a piece of software that does have it. So with that, thank you guys for watching. Thank you viewers for doing everything to support the channel. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, God bless.